Hello, this is my general process vlog for Thursday, April 21st, 2011. Whew. Yesterday I uh, I uh, was fixing supper and I asked my roommate to go out and cut some lettuce for a salad and I, I gave him a bowl and I expected him to get enough for what we needed that night however he cut it all and that offended me because it, it just wasn't common sense to me and I didn't say anything except I said I think you got too much and he said well something like I guess that's what I get for having a too big of a bowl or something like that. He mentioned it was because he had too big of a bowl to put it in. And I was like, mm. He has a tendency to not think for himself. And... that just bothers me that someone would rely on me to do their thinking for them and I did energetically start to just rise up and just like, and I did that you know I'm displeased right now sort of attitude but you know, I got over and I was like, okay, whatever, because I made too much spaghetti. You know, that doesn't justify what he did, but it doesn't, it, it was, uh, for lack of a better term, delusional on my part to uh, become judgmental. And then, um, later on at the shop, I was working on some furniture, and some stripper got in my eye, and I was, you know, it was burning, and, um, he asked, do I want some water, and I said, no, and then he said, do you want some glasses, and I, no, and it was inappropriate on my part. I, for some reason, assumed he was going to say glass of water, and I was reacting to that idea. He just asked me if I wanted some water. Also, as I was working on the furniture beforehand, I was allowing my back chat to accumulate, and I was uh, becoming quite frustrated because the work I was doing was taking longer than I wanted. I was tired and um, his sister-in-law came in at one point and um, was standing there looking at my work and he, she asked him a question about it instead of asking me and that also offends me when people are asking about me but they ask someone else and I'm standing right there. And so I was allowing this to build up and accumulate, and I reacted, and I didn't apologize. I will apologize when he gets home from work. But in his defense, he is a simple man, and no one... No one deserves to be treated like that. Um, it is not right for me to take out on him the little bit I have towards him and then everything else. So, I have been internally just struggling with this idea of 
my lashing out and how I'm overcome easily. And even I was just watching videos from Bernard Pullman yesterday about, you know, this violent back chat and reaction and, um, you know, uh, stay away from me attitude. And uh, and even now I just feel like I don't know what's going to happen if he's going to react in such a way that, you know, I have to leave this place. Because it's not the first time I've done it. Where I do the leave me alone attitude and just, you know, obviously am very displeased. And it's always the accumulation of many things and ne never just one thing. And uh, Part of it is I am deceptive. I have not been honest why I shaved my head. You know, I, I tell people around here it's because I wanted to do something different. Um, I think I look good with it, you know, just I don't want to bring up destiny. Um, because then I will have to get into why I pay attention to what destiny has to say in the first place, and I just don't want to cover that. So that may be the point I actually have to face and move through. I will apologize, tell him about Destiny. I mean, he's seen me watching the videos. Um, and it's insulting to him, at least in theory, for him to have seen people with shaved heads and whatnot. Because... Um, Sunette has that picture of herself on some of her videos that he's seen. And, um, then to lie to him and to others. And then I will tell him why, you know, I even attempt to be pleasing in the eyes of those at Destiny. Um, if he is to be my group, then he needs to be aware of what I'm going through so that he can support me as a group supports one another. Um, and so that is what I will do. I don't have time to sit around and wait for those at Destiny to decide I've jumped through enough hoops and my situation is dire enough that the only way for me out is to be helped by them, um, specifically. I just can't take that anymore. I, I'm done. And so since this is what I'm here, this is what I'm going to use, and this is what I'm going to do. He'll be the first. He already knows there's something different about me, but everyone has practically known that just by the way I act, the way I talk the way I don't act, the way I don't talk. So this will just be step two, I guess. And even if he still asks me to leave because, you know, because of my money situation, he um, doesn't ask me to pay rent, he doesn't ask me to chip in on food, and yeah, I, I just cannot continue to expect him to do this. Yes, I work on the house, yet I just do not feel comfortable with the way things are set up. I feel unequal, that I'm not 
doing my part. And if nothing else, my part is telling the truth. And that, if nothing else, is what I have to offer. You know, if nothing else, the truth about myself. try and make it sound pretty or make it into something it's not and simply this is what I'm aware of and this is what I need to achieve um, often he said I came here for a reason and if for no other reason I came here to finally show myself. From my point of view, my roommate does put up with a lot from me. The way I dance around His thoughts, feelings, hopes, and desires. The way I'm very blunt. And for someone growing up in a town of population, you know, less than 200, and just being <clears throat> a small town country boy, he's never really been exposed to anything like me before. And because I've grown up with myself, I forget what it must be like to encounter me. I couldn't even begin to grasp or want to grasp what it's like for an entrenched human to go through this world because <clears throat> in their position and so sometimes I think I get off easy other times I <clears throat> think I get off hard because I have so much to lose and so much to gain and have so little time and so by telling him <clears throat> the truth, what do I have to lose? You know, deception, dishonesty, inequality. What do I have to gain? Nothing. Because to me, I have already gained everything that I've ever really wanted. You know, the one of my biggest problems was that I kept going after my experience in 2007. It, it just didn't make sense, you know. Uh, I had nowhere to go, sort of, uh, one might say, spiritually or metaphysically or progressive-wise. And that doesn't mean I don't have things to work on. You know, the issues of the day... I realize are the points that I am no longer aware of or that I am accepting and allowing ignorance and abuse within myself because the day is the time of awareness <clears throat> and if there are issues of the day there are points of unawareness in the day and so that is what I am dealing with I saw um, for, ex 
example, I saw what I call the book of the life, the book of life and the book of the dead, the book of the living and the book of the dead. And in it was <clears throat> one name. And the name was the same in both books. <clears throat> and it was Yahuwah. Yod he wow he. Two letters per page. That was it. It filled the entire page. The entire book. The book of the living was illuminated, and the book of the dead was dark. Um, there was a a point when in the visions I saw this what I would call a desert and there was a, a black pool in the middle or somewhere just placed and the pool represented the ocean or the sea and to me the sea represents the 3d manifested reality cosmos universe and that was the point of entry into 3D manifest reality and the exit out of 3D manifest reality. But it was, as far as I could tell, my eyes were closed and it was all in my head, if you will. Um, and at one point there was a male there with me and I don't remember who it was, if it was ever made known to me. But we were talking, or he was talking, and I pretended to listen, but I just kept going, and there was this temple-like building that I was more concerned with. And so, instead of listening and paying attention to what this person was saying, I left and just climbed to the top of the temple. Um, and to me, that person was or represented Jesus he had a Middle Eastern look, longish hair. What really gets me was his meekness and how he allowed me to go. The way he lounged on the ground. But I, at the time I didn't know. And at the time I didn't care. And then just brings, you know, this point that I have suppressed for a while that I do not care about anything. You know, that's really hard for me to accept that I do not care, even though I admit it to myself quite often and admit it to others. Because in this world, there's so much care. You know, people care about so much. And I have no care um, and so when I do actually care about something even to some degree for example the dog it always strikes me as something special some uh, a liability um, because if you're not aware now I am willing to sacrifice everything to I, I don't even know what now, you know, because of that point where I feel I've realized myself, I haven't implemented myself, and I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to be myself. saddens me that I am afraid to be myself because of what I think other people will say or do. I mean, the words are not so important as what they will do or not do because the actions are physical. Even if they, you know, they don't 
involve me, actions are physical, and there's really no coming back from that. The words can be, you know, met with words, but actions I either have to get out of the way of, or I have to meet with actions. And I just don't like where that can lead. But to face my fear, I will make it come true. In my vision back in 2007, I would be told this. I had no guide, really. I mean, there was no being there with me, helping me through this. But there was a voice, if you will. It may have been my voice. It may have been a demon's voice. I don't, I don't know. But they were explaining to me, you know, the universe and showing me how to move and what to say. Um, I was told if I was being overwhelmed to say I don't care. I saw these, and each time I would go into a vision, it seemed to be somewhat repeating itself, even if it was sort of a different symbolic layer, it would still be somewhat the same message, and I saw it as this spiral that just continuously went in on itself. And later on I saw that same image in the picture of collided atoms where the particles they shoot off in these spirals like that and to me that's what it represents the fusion of protons I guess it was not just atoms but protons that must be homosexuality of it. The point of no return. And I'm afraid that if I leave this place, I will have to leave the dog here. But I am in no position to take care of her. take care of the dog I brought here. The best way I've found for me to face things is to put them out in the open and not keep them to myself. so misled both by myself and others I'm tired of believing tired of believing people and taking them for their word but I, I don't know what how to interact with people <clears throat> other than trusting them. Because the only other reaction, interaction I have would create the opposite polarity where I trusted no one and I acted as though everything anyone ever said is a lie. I, I just don't have the answer to that yet. And I've always looked for a place where I can be 
inhuman or non-human. And so far, the only times, situations where that has been realized at some point is when I am outside in nature and when I am alone. And then <clears throat> when I found destiny, I thought, well, perhaps it is a place where I can actually express myself completely. Spread my wings, so to speak. But that is not the case at this point. Um, Bernard Pullman said he, they do not want my help. They are here to help me. I'm not there to help them. So, if you are here to help me, why do you withhold interviews? Why do you insist on me promoting equal money, which is helping your cause? And you can say, well, it's because it's what's best for all, and that does help me. position to well I am in a position to promote equal money I am in to say it does help it can help your cause And so, in realizing this, that I can do what is best for all without blogging and blogging, without shaving my head, I'm sort of relieved. That I do not have that obligation anymore because I was doing it to help you. For myself, to help myself, you know, I have certain circumstances that to me are unique to me. You know, although others deal with them in their own way, the way I have accumulated them, the way I have expressed them, the way I have set themselves up within me to be dealt with is unique to me, and therefore I need unique and specific help. If others are not willing or unable to do that, you know, that is fine. I, it is not a point of me forcing it upon them to do what they do not want to do. But the same goes for me. Um, promoting any cause to me is a waste of time. Sitting and talking to me is a waste of time, even if it's talking about pertinent issues. Instead of going out there and doing something, people, someone is sitting in front of a video camera and making videos about issues. That doesn't change anything, and I just feel caught up in this doing nothing and so I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to do nothing and to accept myself as nothing as unable to do anything I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to deceive myself and others as though it was a point of what is best for all. I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to be deceived by others. That I told me they have 
my best interests. In their heart, in their mind, in their words, in their actions. I commit myself to deal with what is physically here. To do what is best for life as I understand it because I do not understand what life is. Life has yet to really come to me as itself and show itself to me. myself for accepting and allowing myself to forget to breathe. I commit myself to being the breath of life. I've been feeling like I've been falling apart for quite some time because again I, I just didn't know what to do I didn't know why I had anything left to do I didn't know why I was alone and why the entities the creatures that were and are aware of what is going on with me stayed away from me. And I still don't. But I can't allow that to matter anymore. For me to be singled out as the abuser, as the evil, as the source of all of this, and then And being left at that. I can tell that to myself by myself. If I was not aware of how evil, how inappropriate I am, I would not have clung to the message of Jesus as I did. There was nothing else in this world that gave me hope, so to speak. Nothing that could answer and tackle the issues I was dealing with in my mind. And, you know, I was not perfect at it. I have not been perfect at it. But I can't let that stop me anymore. Because often I come up with memories and say, I haven't always done this, so what's the point of doing it now? That's inexcusable. Uh, inex unacceptable. to you Bernard because I was using 
my blogging, my vlogging, and the shaving of my head as a, an attempt to deceive you or to simply appear to be doing the uh, destiny process so that I can be accepted and actually tackle the issues I have at hand and for that I apologize. Um, no, I won't do that anymore.